I'm honored and delighted to help present J. Robert Wood with the Alan Waters Broadcast Lifetime Achievement Award. When I was in high school in Kitchener, I listened to CHLO in St. Thomas. It was a big sounding station in a small market, a station that rivaled CKLW in Windsor at the time. And it was programmed by J. Robert Wood. Little did I know that less than three years later, Bob would offer me a position at 1050 Chum. Bob took a chance on a not quite 20 year old in the summer of 1969, making my lifelong dream to that point come true, to be on the air on Chum. What he heard in that audition, I don't know, because I'm still embarrassed to let anyone hear it. <laughs> Bob had an uncanny ability, and I'm not the only one who feels this. I think those of you who are here from the old days will agree with me that Bob had this uncanny ability to give you hell for something he didn't like, but when you left his office, you felt like you'd been given high praise. He taught me the basic radio formatics as well as the nuances and the subtleties that I still practice today on the air. Bob was at the helm for some of the finest award-winning promotions of contemporary radio. The comprehensive radio documentaries about the Beatles and Elvis Presley, the renowned evolution of rock, Don't Say Hello, Say I Listen to Chum, the graffiti parade and Greaser's Ball at Nathan Phillips Square in the mid-70s. And I remember following that very successful day of the parade and the ball, Bob took us out for dinner, which quickly became a post-mortem meeting with Bob jotting down notes on a napkin as to how he could be done better next year. There was no room for complacency in Bob Wood's world. He was responsible for many other memorable moments, like visits from the Osmonds and Bay City Rollers when Young Street had to be closed to traffic to control the crowds. And let's not forget the regular on-air live shows by Wolfman Jack. Bob would go on to bring Chum FM into the 1980s before becoming general manager of both stations. And Bob always hired the best people he could find, let them do what they did best, and taught them invaluable lessons to make them better. I can say with absolute certainty that my career would not have been as long and successful without the exceptional leadership and unparalleled guidance of my mentor, J. Robert Wood. Bob, I owe my career to you. If you'll join me, we have a short video that we'd like to show you a retrospective and tribute to Bob. I started in radio 51 years ago, and the very first day I started in work, J. Robert Wood was there. I learned the art of radio from him. In St. Thomas, I was a high school student doing afternoon drive, and Bob came in as the, as the PD. And the station rose to success very quickly under his dynamic leadership. He called out 1050 Chum in a handwritten letter to Alan Waters, said, your station is out of touch. In February 1968, Bob Wood arrived. Alan has always made smart decisions. Instead of just following the formula, Bob's idea was to inject a level of personality and make it a very local Toronto radio station. People who thought the radio station might have been done didn't know J. Robert Wood. You needed me. Chum was the first radio station in Canada to play my song, You Needed Me. It had been four years since I had had my last hit record. So for Bob Wood to play that chick song was really important for me. And it became number one on Chum, and it became number one all across North America. You could depend on Chum to be relevant, be on top of the Toronto scene, and to set the bar at a very high level for the radio industry. And we became the greatest top 40 radio station in the history of Canadian radio. What a lot of people don't realize that was Bob was the one who orchestrated the eventual move of Chum FM away from, in those days, the progressive rock underground format. Jay Roberts' legacy is that he was passionate about the business. And had a work ethic that was beyond what anybody's could be. <laughs> Private, inspiring, thoughtful, spiritual. He was laser focused on what he was doing. He has uh, created something worth copying, and a lot of stations were copying every move that Bob made. He carried himself like the Prime Minister of Canada. He had so much 
confidence. Confidence is contagious. What I think Bob really knows is people. I think he's a really good read on people. If he hadn't gone into radio, he would have made an incredible psychiatrist. And I would have paid 175 bucks an hour to go to him. He was brilliant at strategy. He was brilliant at motivating people. And then when he found talent, he was very good at managing talent. He managed some very difficult, crazy personalities. He demanded the best from himself. He demanded the best from others. But he was also willing to give people who had little experience a chance. Roger was telling me one time, 3 o'clock in the morning, he's in the studio doing a show. And all of a sudden, the door opens. And in walks Bob Wood in his house coat and the pajamas. But that was Bob's way of telling you, I'm listening to you. 1050 Chum. Bob always thought big and beyond what radio was into what it could be. Prior to the introduction of CanCon regulations, Bob had this concept that if we could get 10 stations to work together, we might be able to create something that would expose Canadian talent across the country. Maple Music System, Factor, uh, the counterpart in, uh, in uh, French Canada, Music Action. The uh, stick that stirred the drink was Bob Wood. He also liked good, solid news. Tremendous radio documentaries about Elvis Presley and the Beatles and the evolution of rock. And put that together with six years worth of the history of uh, rock. And all of them were syndicated throughout the world. So while the Americans uh, invented rock and roll, it was J. Robert Wood's Chum that documented it. 1050 Chum plays the most hit music. When I turn the microphone on, these days I'm practicing something that he taught me. There were dozens of times when we were trying to decide what should we do. I would look at Roger and he would look at me and invariably one of us would say, what would Bob do? I called Bob and I asked, how do I thank you for what you've done for my career? And what he said was, pass it on. A truly elegant um, visionary whose passion for that medium was just unflappable. He provided us with a great springboard for the shape of things to come. And I think that's a legacy. I think we all carry that forward. 1050 Welcome to the Hall of Fame. What took you so long? Thanks for everything you've done for me over the years. Really appreciate it. You taught me everything I know about radio, and I'm so happy that you're being inducted today. You've earned every accolade you received today. You most sincerely deserve this award. You were a major mentor to me and many others. Thank you, and congratulations. You sure deserve it, and my congratulations. May you have a very successful reign in the Hall of Fame. I'm here just trying to pass it on. Congratulations. I'm still using some of the techniques that uh, I started because you inspired me to do those, and I appreciate you for so many other things. So congratulations. I never can say goodbye, boy. I'm not sure much needs to be said after that video that just played, but I gotta tell you, 1050 Chum was one hell of a radio station. And a lot of the people that made it as great as it was are here today to share in this award with Bob. I just want you to know that I had three mentors in my broadcasting career. There are my dad, Alan Waters, Fred Sherratt, and J. Robert Wood. Bob taught me absolutely everything I know about programming. And Bob, it gives me great pleasure to be here today to present you with the Alan Waters Lifetime Broadcast Award. I think they might want to take a picture. I'm not sure where they are, okay. but anyway, I'll hold on to this for you. Thank you very much. I share this award with the talented men and women of CHUM whose hard work, dedication, and creative brilliance helped to build one of broadcasting's great radio stations. Thank you. Thank you.